Hey everybody, it's Clancy with HKN, and today we're going to talk about a second order circuit. So, we have the circuit drawn on the board right here, and it's an RLC circuit, which means it has a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. In it. And in this case, this is a, par uh, a parallel RLC circuit, so that just means that the capacitor is in parallel with the inductor. So, we want to answer a couple questions about this circuit. Um, mostly one question. What kind of damping is it experiencing? Is it underdamped, critically damped, or overdamped? And the way we need to figure that out is we need to model this circuit with a second order differential equation. That sounds a little overwhelming, so let's just start with the basics. We, we know how to model a circuit already, believe it or not. So let's do some node voltage using KCL. So let's call this VX. So the current coming out of the current through here is Vx minus Vs over R. The current going through here, if you remember your equation, it's I equals C dV dt. So we're going to have C times the derivative of Vx with respect to time. And then let's just call this IL for now. And that all equals zero. Cool. One thing to note when you're solving for a circuit in terms of a second order differential equation is that you want all of your terms to be with respect to one energy storage unit, or sorry, one energy storage element. So an inductor or a capacitor is an energy storage element. So what I'm saying is that in this equation, we have Vx, which is the current across this capacitor, and then we have, or Vx, which is the voltage across this capacitor, and then we have Il, which is the current through this inductor. What we want in this equation is only terms with respect to Il, or only terms with respect to Vx. In this case, we're going to choose Il. So the way we do that is we look at the circuit, and then we realize that Vx is the same thing as VL. And if you remember your equation for the voltage across an inductor, it's just VL equals L di dt. So all that means is that anywhere we see a VX, we can replace it with VL, which is just L di dt. So here, I'm going to separate this fraction at the same time. We're going to have L di dt over R minus Vs over R plus C. And since we're taking a derivative already, we're going to take a second derivative. And we can pull that L out to begin with. So we're going to have C D squared IL DT squared. And then we're just going to add IL because nothing changes there. And that still equals 0. So now what we want to do is we want to put the highest derivative out here and then make sure that its coefficient is 1. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to divide by LC, and I'm going to put the derivatives in highest to lowest order. So I'm going to have d squared IL dt squared plus, and this is the next derivative, but we're dividing by LC. So the L cancels, and we have 1 over RC times DIL dt. And then we have plus i or plus one over L C, because remember we're dividing, times I L equals V S over R L C. So let's recap what we've done so far. We have this circuit right here, and what we're trying to do is figure out if it's underdamped, critically damped, or overdamped. And the way we do that is we model it with a second order differential equation. And we start with our basics, always, from first principles. We know KCL, that the current, the, uh, the sum of the currents going out of a node equals zero. So we sum the currents going out of this node, and that's what this is. So this current, this current, and this current all equal zero. And then we remember that whenever we solve a second order differential equation for a circuit, we either want 
all the terms with respect to the voltage across a capacitor or all the terms with respect to the current through an inductor. In this case, we chose the current through the inductor method because we realized that VL equals VX and VL is just LDI dt. So everywhere we saw VX, we just replaced it with LDI dt. And that was this step. And then we rearranged and made the coefficient of the second derivative 1, which gave us d squared i, or di, second derivative of the current, plus 1 over rc times the derivative of the current, plus 1 over lc times the current, equals your input over rlc. Now we have a second order differential equation, and this is where it goes from circuits to differential equations at this point. What we want to figure out is if this second order equation is underdamped, critically damped, or overdamped. This is the same exact thing as a harmonic oscillator. So, let's check it out. One way we know how to solve this is using a characteristic polynomial. So anywhere you see a derivative, you replace it with an s. And if it's like a second derivative, you replace it with s squared. Third derivative, s cubed, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that. So, we're going to have s squared plus 1 over rc times s plus 1 over lc equals 0. So now we just have this equation and we want to solve it for s. That's uh, pretty easy. It's just a quadratic formula at this point. So we're going to have s equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so it's just 4 over lc. And I'm guessing you guys probably can't see that because the marker's dying. Let's see if the blue will work. So um, I'll trust you guys to write this down because I don't want to rewrite it again and waste more marker, but we have this equation in terms of s where it's s squared plus 1 over rc times s plus 1 over lc equals 0. And then what we did is we solved for s, just using the quadratic formula, and we have s, I'll say it just in case you can't see it, s equals negative 1 over rc plus or minus square root of 1 over rc squared minus 4 over lc, and remember that that is all over 2 times a, which is just 2. And then the next thing that your book does is it takes 2, and it just it, it moves it up. It takes it out of the denominator and rewrites it in terms of this. So then we have that s equals negative 1 over 2rc plus or minus square root of 1 over 2rc squared minus 1 over lc. And the way I got from here to here is just a little algebra. And I trust you guys to figure that out on yourselves, by yourselves. And once again, we'll recap. We're trying to figure out if this is underdamped, overdamped, or critically damped. So we solve for it with a differential equation. And then we go to solve that differential equation. And we figure out what our s values are. And then here's the thing. You can figure it out just from the square root right here. If this square root if the value inside the square root is less than zero, it's underdamped. If it equals zero, it's critically damped. And if it's greater than zero, it's overdamped. So let's figure that out. First, let's define a couple terms here. We know that alpha equals 1 over 2rc, and omega naught equals 1 over the square root of LC. So now all we need to do is just say, okay, if this is less than zero, what does that mean? Well, you're subtracting something here, so it means that 1 over LC is greater than this, which means that the square root of this is greater than this. So that just means omega naught is greater than alpha. That implies that you're underdamped. If they equal each other, this is going to be zero, which, like I said before, means you're critically damped. So omega naught equals alpha implies that 
implies critical depth. I'm just going to write crit. I'm still running out of marker here. And then if omega naught is less than alpha, we know that we're overdamped. So that's the whole problem. This is the end result right here. And I hope I could explain how we got to that point. And another thing to remember, like I said at the very beginning of this video, is that this is just for a parallel RLC circuit. You can't use this for a series RLC circuit, or else you're just going to get the wrong equations going on here. So that's it. I hope that helped. And we'll see you next week.